Hey guys, how y'all doing? Time to bring some focus to your favorite and not so favorite geeky films. Cam here and welcome back to Cam in Focus. All right, I'm just gonna skip my usual spiel this time. Subscribe to Geek News Now, follow us on social media, metallicdicegames.com, code GNN for 10% off, ripedapparel.com, code GNN10 for 10% off. Let's get right to it. Ah, Ninja Assassin. What a film. While it didn't exactly wow the crowds at the box office, it has since gained something of a cult following as the modern ninja film to watch. Produced by the Wachowskis and directed by James McTeague, this film stars Korean pop star Rain as the main character Raizo after he impressed the Wachowskis with his physical performance in one of their earlier films, Speed Racer. Now this isn't going to be an analysis of the nuance of the film or me breaking down the subtle metaphorical meaning behind everything. This ain't that kind of film. Don't get me wrong, this is by no means a bad movie, but it's definitely not one of the greats either. It's got some shoddy performances, a few pacing issues, and some of the writing feels very, well, first draft. But what this film does do is tell an interesting story with some stellar action and stunts to back it up. So instead of focusing on one aspect of the movie, I'm going to discuss a few things that stand out to me as reasons why this film might be better than you remember. Yeah, you know what's coming. A numbered list. Yeah, baby, yeah! Number one, the action. Obviously. Besides absolutely not holding back in terms of blood and gruesome gore, which I definitely appreciate, there are a couple of reasons the action in this film works so damn well. The first of which are the stunt coordinators, Chad Stahelski and David Leach. Do those names sound familiar? They directed a little flick some of you might have heard of called John F***ing Wick. These guys are monsters when it comes to stunt work, especially in this film, most of which is surprisingly done in camera. The characters flip and twirl and engage in crazy fights that are filmed in a way that simultaneously feel chaotic yet coherent. Which brings me to the second reason the action works so well. Rain himself. This guy trained for months in order to do about 95% of the action and stunts himself, which is insane! He absolutely nails the fights and the stunts and you can really see how hard he works to make it look authentic. Another character that brings an interesting level of authenticity to this film is the villain Lord Ozunu, played by Shokasugi. You might know this man if you've seen, uh, I don't know, any ninja film from the 1980s? This is the man when it comes to ninja movies, and you can tell that he is loving what he's doing. His performance feels simultaneously serious yet hammy at the same time, and I love it. Fun fact, Ozuno is named after Enno Ozuno, the founder of Shugendo in the 7th century, which is a philosophy of training and worship practiced by monks that lived in the mountains. You must hate all weakness, hate it in others, but most of all, hate it in yourself. Number two, the story. Don't get me wrong, this story is nothing new or groundbreaking. And when I say some of the dialogue feels really choppy, it really, really feels choppy. You know about them? Hello. Well, there are these clans, and apparently they've been supplying assassins to governments or anyone who has 100 pounds of gold. And about half of the story of this film and half the film, is told in flashback. Normally that would really grate on my nerves and get really old really quick, but the writers do a good job of making the transitions between flashbacks and present day feel smooth by making the content of each flashback relate in some way to something our main character is doing or experiencing. It gives us the idea that even though Raizo is on the run from the ninjas, their teachings and their code are still ingrained into his everyday life. And to be honest, while the stuff with Interpol and the conspiracy crap really isn't all that interesting, I always found myself incredibly invested in everything involving Raizo and his ninja clan. The writers do a good job in portraying his time with the clan as something of a double-edged sword, and how they show Uzunu teaching his students was honestly really fascinating. My only real gripe with that particular aspect of the writing is that they didn't really go that extra mile to make his eventual betrayal of the clan incredibly believable. His reason is, of course, his love for a girl, but it culminates and comes to a head in a way that feels kind of forced in my opinion. When Raizo finally meets the Interpol officer Mika, 
Some of that bad writing comes out in some absurdly heavy-handed exposition, and a few lines that really feel like the lower end of the spectrum of MCU-style humor. Come on to help you. Well, I don't have a lot of options, okay? I know one took a Tybo class, but that is the extent of my Kung Fu abilities, all right? But fortunately, it doesn't last for very, very long before the first big action scene begins at the end of Act 2, which, honestly, if nothing else, is the highlight of the film because it's an insane, gory, stunt-filled spectacle that's an absolute feast for the eyes. Number 3. The Smaller Details This film has a lot of nice tidbits of detail that really help to expand the characters in the story. So I'm going to list a few here without getting too deep into them. First, the heart. The heart plays a big role in Raizo's character as what he believes sets him apart from the rest of his clan. Everything has a heart. I don't. Really? The film does a lot to show you how his heart begins to beat in sync with his lover Kiriko. Something I noticed was when Kiriko is about to be killed, very faintly in the background, you can hear their hearts beating out of sync and panicked. When she's stabbed, her heart stops and all you hear is his continuing to beat. Second, The Shadows. This film goes that extra mile to show us how the ninjas move in the shadows. We constantly see them creeping and stepping out of dark spaces as if they materialize before our eyes. During Raizo's fight at the beginning of the second act, a flashlight pans past them for a split second and they literally vanish when the light falls off them. I love that. It adds a nice layer of macabre and mysticism to the ninjas that we don't really see very, very much of these days. Thirdly, a small detail that kind of cements Raizo's compassion for Mika was her giving him water while he was imprisoned by the police, which is a nice little parallel to Raizo giving his lover Kiriko water while she was imprisoned by the clan. It was a small moment that I had always overlooked before, but noticing it now has given me a greater appreciation for Raizo and his character growth. Unfortunately, gems in the ninja genre are kind of few and far between these days. It makes sense then why this film is starting to become recognized as a good ninja film, because I honestly think it is. Yeah, it's not great, it's certainly not anywhere near the quality of some other action films that have come out in recent years, but it's still a fun watch if only for the ninja action itself. All things considered, this film is definitely better than I remember and is worth the watch. I like him way more. Well, that's all I got for you today. I hope you enjoyed my little dive into Ninja Assassin. I really hope this film doesn't get forgotten in the years to come because really, like films like this are few and far between and I really hope that we get more of this style of ninja action in the future. This has been Cam and Focus, proud to be part of the Geek News Now Network. Find us on Facebook, Twitch, and Twitter. Links in the description below. And don't forget to hit up MetallicDiceGames.com and RipedApparel.com and use the codes GNN and GNN10 for 10% off of their products. Have a wonderful day, everybody.